Uh, hi, so my name is Brittany Mack and I'll be talking about thermoregulation in African elephants today as a part of the homeostasis in journal 3.4. Okay, so what is uh, homeostasis to begin with? Uh, homeostasis is systems that are used to regulate internal properties and help maintain normal condition to consistently run a body. These may include like pH level or temperature. Homeostasis is broken down into at least three independent mechanisms for the system to be proper, properly regulated. These may include things, these include things such as receptor, a control, and the effector. Uh, the receptor monitors and responds to any change in the environment that may cause irregularities to the system. When the receptor responds to a change, it sends off information to the control center, which determines an appropriate response for the change. In most examples, the control center is the brain. The control center then sends off the response to be taken to the effector. This can range from muscles, organs, response systems, anything like that. After the signal has been received, it is met with a change which can result in either a positive or a negative feedback to fully restore the normality to the body. Thermoregulation refers to the mechanisms and systems used by the body to balance core temperatures. Uh, basically, keeping a constant internal temperature. Every species has its own way of thermoregulating. Um, for example, humans use sweat to cool down by using a type of heat loss called latent heat of vaporization. Thermoregulation is under the bridge of, of homeostasis. Today, for my 3.4 internal, I'll be doing thermoregulation in African elephants. African elephants are mainly found in Africa where temper temperatures can fluctuate to an extent of the animal being freezing at night and overheating during the day. So to ensure survival, the elephants need to keep their body temperature at an optimum temperature of 35 to 37 degrees Celsius. Ways of cooling the elephant may be behavioral such as moving to shady areas or drinking more water and while this may help, the main way an elephant will stay at the right temperature is through thermoregulation. So why do the elephants need to thermoregulate? Uh, the elephants need to stay at that optimum temperature I previously mentioned. Because um, anything hotter than this and the enzymes become completely denatured, meaning that they just don't work and they freeze. Uh, anything colder than that temperature and they get too cold to move and stop completely. Enzymes are essential to life for any living organism, organism or system. So they're really 100% necessary for the elephant. Elephants use a negative feedback loop to maintain the body temperature. The first step in thermoregulation is the input. So, for example, uh, during the day the African elephants live in the savannah, uh, so during the day the elephant can overheat. The input is then a high body temperature. The next step in the loop is the receptor. Elephants have thermoreceptors all over their body and their skin. The thermoreceptors are sensory cells which can detect change in body temperatures. This information is then sent to the controller and impulses through the nervous system. The controller in this instance is the brain, or more specifically, the hypothalamus, a section of the brain, essentially the brain of the brain. The hypothalamus is a small part of the brain that links to the nervous system via the pituitary gland, which is in control of the release of the hormones for homeostasis. The hypothalamus sends a message to the effector as to what action to take to get a result. The effect in this case is the blood vessel as it expands, also known as vasodilation. When the blood vessel expands, it allows more blood to get through and reach the surface of the skin. Heat then radiates from the skin, cooling the blood and therefore the body. In the opposite direction, when the elephant is too cold, the veins constrict, also known as vasoconstrict. This is when the veins narrow to reduce blood flow by muscle contraction in the blood vessel walls. This means that less blood gets through and heat is constrained rather than radiated out. So what happens when there's an interruption in the thermoregulation system? Um, for example, a drought might cause an interruption, uh, which is rather common in the savannah. Uh, the elephant may suffer from heat exhaustion. Uh, so hypothermia can come about when such things such as a drought occurs and there's no behavioural thermoregulation that can go on, um, so that's such as standing under shade or drinking extra water, and that will be because the trees have died because there's no water and the water has all dried up. 
So when the core temperature of the elephant gets too high and it can't go hide under trees or drink extra water, um, the enzymes become denatured, as I previously mentioned a couple of slides before, and the thermoregulatory system enzymes begin to break down. Now this means that thermoregulation stops and the elephant will generally die from exhaustion or dehydration because the temperature gets too high without it being regulated by vasodilation. So uh, it's important that there's no interruptions in the thermoregulation system or else it can result in things such as death for the elephant. Um, elephants tend to migrate as well, um, which can be a huge adjustment for the thermoregulation system. Uh, so they migrate for reasons such as food supplies and climate control. When this happens, the body needs to completely readjust itself in order to adapt to the new temperature of the place which they've just migrated to. The new place usually has more water and better grasslands, meaning the elephant doesn't need to cool itself as much through thermoregulation as before in the previous place, because it can through behavioural ways, such as drinking more water or standing under shade, those sort of things. Um, so it's essential that thermoregulation can alter the body's core temperature to match the new surroundings and fit in better. This shows that thermoregulation can adapt to new situations and can change just because it has the skin receptors um, which can sense change and all that sort of stuff and the hypothalamus making decisions for the element, the elephant. So um, thermoregulation is really adjustable um, because it's got the skin receptors which detect when it's too hot or when it's too cold and because it's got the hypothalamus um, deciding what needs to be done to fix the problem. Um, and the elephant has an important niche in the savannah. Uh, it's more commonly known as the ecosystem engineer because it knocks down trees in, in order to make way for the grasslands. So it's important that the elephants can survive in their habitat in order to fill the ecological niche.